Creatures like these ruled the Earth for 120 million years. Dinosaurs. It was a violent age, blood red in tooth and claw. But how dinosaurs actually fought remains a mystery. Perhaps these hold the answer. Dinosaur tracks frozen in stone and in time. 60 years ago, a paleontologist believed these tracks signified the greatest find of the century. A fossil record of dinosaurs locked in a life and death encounter. But fellow scientists said no, the tracks showed no evidence of combat. Now a paleontologist and a sculptor have plunged into the controversy. Their plan, to test the theory using the latest in computer technology. But can computers really show us the ferocity and terror of a dinosaur attack? It's painstaking work. The minute examination of fossils. The remains of creatures that lived tens of millions of years ago. This is modern paleontology. Yet work like this tells us precious little about how dinosaurs actually lived. We know they had teeth, but how did they use them? We know they had eyes, but how did they see? We know they had claws, but how did they kill? The two men in this pickup aim to find out. They are possibly the most unlikely team in modern dinosaur science. Jim Farlow is a professor at Indiana Purdue University. He's one of America's most highly respected paleontologists. But his partner is a different species altogether. Dave Thomas is a professional sculptor and he specializes in crafting scientifically accurate life-size reproductions of just one kind of animal, dinosaurs. Farlow and Thomas hope to solve one of modern paleontology's most enduring mysteries, how dinosaurs fought. And the secret, they believe, lies in the footprints that dinosaurs left behind. It's interesting that we know very little about so many features about what dinosaurs were like when they were alive and even what we know about their movements, it's partly based on trying to understand how the joints and the skeletons work, but uh, footprints tell us an awful lot about that. They, they really do. All other fossils are corpses, but footprints were made by a living animal, and that's why I really love to study them. The dinosaur detectives are on a mission. They plan to bring to life a dinosaur attack based on footprint data alone. To help them in their quest, they've approached a group of computer animators with a daunting challenge. To create a 3D animation of the dinosaurs in combat. Dave Thomas hopes the animation will bring lifelike movement to a scene that hitherto he could only imagine. The beauty of the computer graphics is that I can't let anybody else see what's in my head. And a computer, with a computer, you can do it so you can put it on a screen and other people can see it too. Farlow and Thomas are heading for one of the prime track sites in America. The State Park at Glen Rose, Texas is a well-known beauty spot. Tourists come here from all over America. But the winding river valley and rolling hills of Glen Rose hold a deep secret, which until relatively recently had lain hidden for over a hundred million years. But 60 years ago, one man unearthed the secret of Glen Rose, quite literally. 
Dinosaur hunter Roland T. Bird, known to family and colleagues alike as R.T., spent most of the 1930s roaming around the southern United States. His job, to find fossils and to ship them back east to the American Museum of Natural History in New York. But in 1938, R.T. Bird struck the mother load, and he took his own movie camera to record the scene. Here at Glen Rose, stamped into the bed of the Paluxy River, were hundreds of fossilized tracks made by giant four-footed plant eaters known as sauropods. It was a virtual dinosaur freeway. The story quickly became front page news. The little town of Glen Rose changed overnight, as a longtime resident remembers. Jeannie Mack. Everybody went out there to see what was going on. You know, it was curious. It was a big thing to dig up those dinosaur tracks. I thought the river had washed them out, made tracks. Jeannie Mack now runs the town museum, where she still cherishes memories of the time a little girl met the dinosaur hunter from New York, Roland T. Bird. I spoke to him, offered him cookies that we'd made. I made, I had made cookies shaped like dinosaur tracks. You know, took a tin and bent it all in, 